Octagon Council, uh, the editor of the film. Yay! Lorenz Grant, the producer of the film, who also directed the bulk of the uh, uh, still and footage research. We're going to take a, 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 a few questions and then we'll bring up our guest. Are there any questions for the filmmakers? Yeah. Yep. First of all, I want to say this is an incredible film. You guys, this team, you change the world with every film you make. Thank you. Thank you. And I also want to thank you because as a filmmaker, this hit home to me because my first film dealt with two former Black Panthers and, and we were always criticized, or often sometimes, criticized for not talking more about the Black Panther Party. And I would say, well, that's not this story. There will someday be a story that talks about the Black Panthers, and today, or yesterday, I guess, is that time. And so I thank you. I can point everybody to this film. Um, and I do want to say that I also want to thank you because I, I feel that as an African-American man in this country, to explore uh, U.S. history through this lens is incredibly, incredibly important. And for me, it was so moving, and the most moving part of this film was when one of the Panthers said, I was free. In the middle of this gunfight, I was free. And it really brought tears to my eyes, because even today, in 2015, that eludes many African American men. And to hear that struggle going back into the 60s and 70s when I was a kid, was very moving. So, thank you for your storytelling. Thank you for your artistry. Thank you for bringing an incredibly important story about American history. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, before I forget, I, I should say that uh, the film will be on PBS in 2016, probably February of 2016. That's what we're looking at. So, until then, we're, we're doing festivals all over. If you represent a festival, please let us know because we're trying to do as many festivals as we possibly can. Um, uh, anybody from LA? We're at the uh, we're the opening night at Pan African Film Festival on the fifth, I believe it is, of February, so like a week and a half. And then anybody from New York? We're at MoMA at Doc Fortnight on February thirteenth, with the opening night film at Doc Fortnight. So let people know if you're from from those places. Um, one of the things we're doing with the film is, is we're doing a, a, a theatrical release, um, and what we're trying to do. Uh, PBS is, is sponsoring that. One of the, the things we're trying to do, is, one of the things we're doing, is, is raising more money so we can have a more robust release, release to more cities. If you're interested and you have any ideas, if you're interested in helping us, you can go to theblackpanther.com, which is is the website for the film. Or a lot of the people on the crew will be outside. You can give them your card or email address or anything like that. Um, I think we might start a Kickstarter campaign in the future. Okay, that's that's the ad. Now we'll go back to the questions. Theblackpanthers.com. Okay, yeah. It was an honor to be here and watch this today. You have eloquently opened up a yearning, and it leaves you needing and wanting more. Thank you. I guess the film just wasn't long enough. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, my question is in no way a criticism of a film rooted in the Black Panther, Panther ten point platform, but I just wondered what the reason, other than length, that you did not do the People's Revolutionary Constitutional Convention. I mean, they, you know, um, that, that was one of our main problems, you know, what stories to tell and what stories not to tell. I think one of the things we wanted to do was have the stories lead to something else. So, you know, so that, uh, you know, Eldridge goes to Algeria, which leads to something else, you know. Um, by, uh, Bobby Seale, you know, in, in, at the Chicago trial, leads to Fred Hampton, which leads to L.A., and we wanted to, one thing to lead to the other. So some stories we, we cut, you know, although they're important stories, we had to cut them just for time, and because sometimes they just didn't go, you know, they were, they were interesting of themselves, but they didn't lead to something else. Was there a question way in the back? Yes, uh, yeah, that was dope. That was awesome. Um, <laughs> That's a quote. It was dope. <laughs> <laughs> My question is for all, all, you, all you folks. Um, what did you learn in uh, in um, interviewing and talking with the uh, the members of Black, Black Panthers about being a revolutionary? Somebody else want to answer? That? <laughs> uh, well, I talked to a lot of people. Probably spent a lot of time with them 
personally on the phone, you know, certainly to try and get them to speak on camera, but also to try and, um, you know, get steeped in the story and the era and paint a picture of the era. And, you know, certainly one of the many, of the many takeaways was oh, this, you know, amazing commitment and sacrifice. Um, and I think that for those that have survived, it was, you know, quite a personal burden on them personally, their family, um, but that was something they were very committed to and, you know, of course, can quote everything that they did because they really lived it and breathed it and really, really believed it. And I think uh, that's a huge takeaway if you really are into a movement and a struggle. Uh, you know, they, they lived it 100%. Okay, I, I want to bring up um, our, our special guest, uh, Kathleen Cleaver. <laughs> So Kathleen and I have have, have, have something we have to run to, uh, unfortunately, you know, really soon. So are there questions, a uh, couple questions for Kathleen before we run? Kathleen. Well, I would tell you that there's an enormous number of young activists, I call them the rainbow young people, because when you see a demonstration at night, you can't tell who's in it, like across the Brooklyn Bridge or out in Ferguson. It's not all black people. It's not all white people. It's a mix. It's young people out there challenging <clears throat> what? Police brutality. Mm -hmm. Police brutality, racial discrimination, poverty, <laughs> exclusion. Sounds very, very familiar. Mm -hmm. They're the, the grandchildren of Pat. I mean, of the generation who were Panthers, these are the grandchildren. And so what you can do is, that's your crowd, work with them, help them with media, help them with organizing, go to the demonstrations. People are trying to formulate some type of consistent organizing principle. I don't know how successful that's going to be. I was invited to a meeting in, um, closed meeting in St. Louis in the middle of October, and they said, we want to plan to form a national organization out of what's going on at Ferguson. And I said, well, I'm coming to uh, Missouri, but I'm coming to a Black Panther uh, reunion in Kansas City, so I can't come to your meeting. But I, I just think this is a moment, and I'm very happy that this film is out at this moment. It's a long film, and has a lot of uh, inspiring aspects. I would tell you that's probably 1% of the Black Panther Party. It's a huge story. 14 years of organizing, you can't tell it all, but you and your generation can pick it up. Pick up the work, keep it moving. So there's a lot of things you can do, but you have to decide. You want to give your talents to a struggle to make this a much better, safer, healthier place for young people. Oh, and, and for the... And for the, for, the, for the film directly, you know, um, as I said, the, the, this is the crew, um, only Kathleen and I have to leave. They're going to stay here to answer, answer questions, um, and they will be outside. And if you have a card, if you want to give your email, we will find a use for you in spreading the word of, of the film. So, so and, and we really do need it, need everybody. I mean, that's what you see about, about the Panthers, a people's movement. You know, they, you know it, it's about people. That, and as people, we do have power. We do have power. Um, we're gonna take one more question for Kathleen. No matter what they said. Okay. <laughs> Anything else for Kathleen? Yeah. Uh, it's an honor. Um, I just want to ask: in the making of this film, uh, Kathleen Cleaver, in you, as you watch it today with all of us, 
is there any reflection or any point in this process that stood out to you, that called out to you in reliving this history? Well, there is a part because the turning point in the story of the Black Panther Party is something called The Split, which was manipulated and produced by the FBI, they spent all kinds of letters, they did all, everything they could, and I have a whole section of counterintelligence documents that the professor gave me of when they get so excited, we did it, we did it, you know, we don't have to do anything more. They were determined to put Elders and Huey on a collision course. One of them's in Oakland, and the other one's in Algeria, and they can't talk face to face, and they haven't seen each other, and Elders have been trying to get Huey to visit, and all these people were telling, so that particular moment in that time period, which was in the end of February uh, 1971. It was like a huge turning point for everybody that was in the party. And it broke, uh, broke us into separate parts, separate factions. Um, and so that's really, that's not really clear how that happened to most people. So the fact that it begins, like I told Stanley, I gave you the whole tape of what he said. You only put a little bit. He said, look, you want to get me in trouble for what? <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> so, so it was a contentious era and threats of killing, etc. And I was told, I got a letter from someone written, the FBI wrote a letter, but they signed Big Man's name. And they said, if you value, Elgin, if you value Kathleen's life, don't let her come back to Oakland for this rally. So we didn't know whether they said it or not. So it's that time, that era, that era that most people don't know much about that was very powerful and very painful for those of us who were involved. That's what. And we gotta go. Yeah, Kathleen and I have to go, unfortunately, but the rest of the crew is here. Are there any any, any burning desire questions for myself or Kathleen? That you have to answer. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I, um, I feel Wait a minute, wait a minute. When that, that happened right after uh, Nixon's election. It was very predictable. He said he's the law and order, and as soon as he got in the White House, boom, 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 boom. So I was in Algeria. So to me, I was an observer. Do, do you know what other people have said, or have they talked about any conflict about, I guess, the conflict Well, I wasn't part of those discussions. I'm in Algeria. You can't really call that easily. It's an international, people would write, and half the letters we got were written by the FBI. Yes, and, and, I, and I think, you know, as, as, as I say in the film, you know, people left the party, people were scared to join the party. You know, why would you join a party that's, that's totally infiltrated and the police are raiding? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, you know it, you'd have to be, you know, somewhat insane at that point. So I think that's one of the things it did. I know somebody's waving their hand, you got like, real quick, we got to get out of here. Well, like she said, this, you're the next generation. I mean, especially college students today. I mean, the advantage that your generation has is you've got all the social media and technology, technological tools that you're accessing. Well, I think every generation, especially every generational movement, there always seem to be the disconnect between the, the parents or the older people and the, the youths who are leading the movement. And I think, you know, you can certainly learn from that of engaging them. I mean, now everybody can almost see and hear and get access to any kind of movement, any kind of protest, any kind of opinion point of view, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on YouTube. So it's up to why don't wait to engage, go and engage, ask the question. Um, you know, exercise even that authority to say, look, I want to talk to you about X, Y, and Z. I would recommend doing that. We have time for one last question. That hand right in the middle. Uh, can you comment on the uh, role, role of the FBI informer, how you've gotten that person into your film and what, the, what has happened since? 
Yes, <clears throat> there were quite a few uh, informers, and this particular informer, uh, William O'Neill, uh, through a lot of digging, we found um, uh, well a source that does not want to be named uh, helped us find a lot of the police documents uh, that related to him. And this person, uh, William O'Neill, since died. I mean, he did a, a public interview, kind of coming clean, if you will in the documentary series Eyes on the Prize, and uh, we licensed portions of that interview with him. And almost shortly after it aired, 